So I think we all hope that by uh, mm -hmm. early mid-August, we're looking at uh, COVID-19 uh, very much in the rearview mirror. Uh, that is our uh, guesstimate mm -hmm. at this point, but we're certainly keeping a very close eye Sandy Barua, CEO of the Detroit Regional Chamber, you announced a decision today that I know you dreaded making, but one that was probably inevitable. You're moving the Mackinac Policy Conference from its traditional spot at the end of June to August 10th, later in the summer. I imagine it was corona, coronavirus related. Do you feel like in pushing the conference back, you'll be out of the danger zone? Yeah. Certainly, Nolan, we, we hope so. I think we all hope that by uh, mm -hmm. early, mid-August, we're looking at uh, COVID-19 uh, very much in the rearview mirror. Uh, that is our uh, guesstimate mm -hmm. at this point, but we're certainly keeping a very close eye and we're in very close contact with public health officials. Uh, and you know, uh, we will not conduct any event or meeting including the Mackinac Policy Conference, unless it's certainly safe for everyone to be there. So in postponing this, I mean, this is not like calling up your friends and say, hey, we were supposed to have dinner next week, let's put it off I mean, uh, for a month. This is a pretty big logistical challenge. You had planned everything around that date, uh, booked hotel rooms. Uh, what sort of nightmare is this going to be, shifting the thing two months, three months uh, into the summer? So uh, it has been uh, a, a Herculean effort uh, led by oh, Tammy Carnwright, our chief operating officer, mm -hmm. uh, to play three-dimensional chess. Uh, you know, obviously with the Grand Hotel, the, all the hoteliers and retailers and restaurants that we use on the island, the ferry company, the, uh, the airline, the, you know, the, the, the freight companies, the technology companies. Uh, but fortunately, everyone, everyone really uh, came together uh, all the vendors, all of our partners came together very, very well, very collaboratively and said, listen, we're going to find a way to make this work. And, and we did. So this is about 1,700 people sign up for the conference, right? Yes. And you use how many hotel rooms on the island? Uh, all of them. <laughs> so you use everything. The people have already signed up, made their reservations. What do they need to do? Do they need to transfer those those res reservations, will they physically uh, or automatically transfer? Do you have to do it? Uh, do you have to make those calls? Yeah. So if, uh, if, if you're at the Grand Hotel uh, and you have a reservation there, uh, those automatically transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're at one of the other uh, hotels on the island and you have a reservation there, uh, we're suggesting you reach out to that hotel just mm -hmm. to make sure that they, they have done that. Uh, you know, different hotels on the island operate a little bit differently. Uh, many of them are very close partners with ours and, and, they're, and they're working seamlessly. But I just encourage that over the next you know, few days or weeks that you just make sure that uh, your reservation for your room has transferred over. So that's the height of the season. You're confident you'll have the rooms you need? Yes. We, again, we worked uh, with uh, not just the Grand Hotel. We worked with uh, other hoteliers on the island that, that we use. We worked with the uh, uh, with the Mackinac Island Convention and Visitors Bureau, and I want to send out my kudos to all of those organizations. Uh, they they basically said to us, "Listen, we we want to work with you to find a way to get this done." The hoteliers, the retailers, restaurants, the ferry companies. Uh, so they have found a way to get this done. Uh, we uh, our mission was to ensure that this conference in August is is a full and complete conference. Uh, you know, we're not truncating it in any way. We're not reducing its scope in any way. Uh, and so we need the hotel rooms to ensure that. And, and we think we're, we're there, if not almost there. So Sandy, you also had this program just about planned. Get speakers lined up, uh, agendas in place. Will all of that transfer or will you have to go back and renegotiate with your speakers, perhaps find different, different um, guests who will be talking to the participants? Yeah, great question, Nolan. A little bit of both. Uh, certainly, you know, COVID-19 has changed all of our worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan is going to look pretty different uh, come August. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to have an agenda that's relevant. Uh, we're going to work with our planning committees. We're certainly uh, working with our conference chair, Ryan Maybach, 
uh, to make sure that what happens on the island in August is relevant to, uh, to Michigan, given our new reality. So you probably will take up the recovery from this COVID-19 damage as part of your agenda on the island. Oh, absolutely. It's going to have to be a big part of the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how we're recovering, what we need to recover, uh, what the extent of the damage uh, has been, uh, what companies and governments are doing to assist individuals, companies, and communities recover. Uh, all of that, in some form or fashion, is going to have to be a key part of the agenda. So you're the first of the big four, if you will, to cancel. I mean, we also have the Grand Prix coming up, the golf tournament, as well as the new summertime auto show. Have you heard anything about how those will, events will be impacted? Do you expect them to be impacted? So we have been uh, in very close contact with all of those major events that you just mentioned. In fact, we gave them uh, a heads up uh, you know, that we were uh, changing our date. Uh, so we're not going to step on any other organization's uh, decisions or potential mm -hmm. announcements that they might, they might be making to alter their plans, uh, but we're in close contact with them. We didn't want to catch our friends by surprise. So, I mean, you're head of the Chamber of Commerce, and can you talk a little bit, Sandy, about how this virus, this shutdown, has affected commerce in Metro Detroit, and how do you expect us to recover? Yeah, well, uh, the, the short answer, Nolan, is not going to surprise you. The, the short answer is massively. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at uh, the economic impact that, uh, that we have endured just in this last week, uh, it, has been, uh, it has been substantial, it has been wide-ranging, and it has been deep. Uh, there is just no question that this is going to be a, uh, a significant dent in our regional GDP. Uh, this is going to have a significant impact on so many businesses, especially small and medium-sized businesses, yeah. uh, especially those businesses that are so dependent upon uh, foot traffic or vehicular traffic. Uh, as you know so well, Nolan, small businesses run on cash flow, yeah. and they, most small businesses have a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks of cash on hand to maintain operations. Uh, we're now a week and a half into this crisis, really kind of in this, uh, where a lot of organizations have moved to work at home. Uh, and so these small businesses are running out, if not run out of capital already. And summer's a big time in, in Detroit. I mean, particularly for all these restaurants and bars with all the events that go on, all the various festivals. If those don't take place, um, it's, a, it's a big hurt on these, on the businesses and on downtown itself. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, uh, some of these other big uh, events that have you know, national import and uh, attract uh, tremendous amounts of people to our region uh, are able to find a, a plan B like, like we did. Now, I'll admit, finding a plan B is not easy. Uh, right. you know, so I think uh, you know, criticism of any organization that hosts a major, major event uh, that hasn't yet announced their plans, uh, you know, is, is completely unwarranted. It is a very difficult uh, thing to move uh, a major event like the Mackinac Policy Conference. Now, Sandy, you've heard the president say, uh, we want to reopen the economy um, at Easter. You, you, you're hearing from other people who say, you know, we may have to emerge from this lockdown even before the virus is completely eradicated. We may have to restart, we will have to restart our economy at some point. That reopening process, is the process that encouraging of people back out into society and into factories and offices and stores, it's, it's going to be a difficult process, isn't it, to convince people that it's okay to go out if you take precautions. Well, that's a great question, Nolan. I think different people are going to react uh, differently. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some people are going to be so anxious uh, that they're going to run out there uh, at, at, their, at their first available opportunity. Uh, obviously, we see nationwide, despite calls from uh, public health officials like Dr. Fauci uh, to social distance, we're seeing uh, a lot of people, especially uh, kind of that Gen Z, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. kind of ignore those warnings. Uh, yes, you're going to see some people who aren't going 
I believe it's going to be safe to go out there even after the all clear is given. So I don't think we know, Nolan, how people are going to react. My guess is that the vast majority of people are going to be so uh, stir crazy, uh, you know, staring at a computer screen from their living room or their kitchen uh, that they're going to be anxious to go out and uh, grab a cocktail with a friend. Sandy, we'll see you in August, uh, I hope. Hopefully sooner than that. <laughs> okay. See you on the island in August. So okay. thanks, Sandy thanks, Braun, Detroit Regional Chamber. Appreciate it. Find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.